The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Southeast. Once again, it's time for Braves baseball. An absolutely perfect night here at PNC Park in Pittsburgh, where the Braves with a win tonight could split a four game series. Boy, a beauty pitch by Julio Tehran last night. We'll see what Mike Fulton has in store for the Buccos in game four tonight. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, welcome back to the ballpark. Intriguing pitching matchup. Jeff Locke for the Pirates, and boy, Mike Fulton can't pitch any better than he's been doing. No, I can't wait for those uh, five day turns to come around. I'm enjoying watching Mike Fulton pitch so much, and he's coming off arguably his best outing as a major leaguer in Kansas City where he went eight shutout innings. He's not walking anybody. Two walks to 16 strikeouts. That cannot be said for Jeff Locke. He's a guy who's a fastball change up guy and he walks a ton of guys and always has in his career. So hopefully the Braves hitters tonight will be patient. Try to get into some hitters counts and take advantage of that. And as we keep saying get on the board early. Noticeable spring in the steps in the Atlanta clubhouse before the game. Great comeback that fell short short in game two big win last night in game three. Let's see if the Braves can head to Philly with a winning streak after Mike Fulton performance tonight. It's the series finale starting lineups from PNC Park in Pittsburgh coming right up. Atlanta Braves baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff low price every day. Atlanta Braves baseball is sponsored by your local Ford dealer and Xfinity X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. Still a few minutes away from first pitch tonight at PNC Park. The Braves coming off a 3-1 victory behind Julio Tehran last night. 
Clint Hurdle and the Pirates welcome Starling Marte back in the lineup after his three day paternity leave. We will take a quick break, come back with lineups and first pitch right after this. is sponsored by your local Toyota dealers, Let's Go Places, the Georgia Lottery, and Zaxby's Indescribably Good. Fans still making their way across the Roberto Clemente Bridge for game four of our series here at PNC Park. It is a perfect night for baseball, warmest of the four days here in Steel City 68 degrees currently forecast is for fair skies and no interruptions a different look for Brian Snitker's lineup tonight he's got Chase Darno leading things off Daniel Castro a late addition to the lineup one of baseball's freakiest injuries took place about an hour or two ago in the Braves clubhouse Yeah, Eric Ibar got a chicken bone stuck in his throat had to be rushed to the hospital had to be actually put under so they could remove it we hope he's resting comfortably and doing OK. Jeff Locke on the mound for his eighth start a former Braves farmhand involved in the trade for Nate McLeod. You see his numbers when he gets guys on base things go sideways for him. And his first pitch of the night is downstairs to Chase Darno. One ball no strikes Pirates wearing the home camouflage uniforms they had their salute to the military before the game. Members of the armed services took their positions on the diamond and then the Pirates came out greeted them gave them an autograph and urged them to head to the stands and enjoy the game. And there's a strike to Darno who's got a two for six series working. As you said a few days ago Chip if you hit you're going to play. And he's been hitting. And good patience being shown here again. Jeff Locke walks a lot of guys. He goes to deep counts on a lot of guys. Low 90s fastball, a ton of change ups, and a curveball. And a leadoff walk gets things started for the Braves in the first. You're right, Joe. 22 walks now. 42 hits in 38 innings. He is in the stretch almost constantly with more than one runner on base. Yeah, and we show those numbers uh, of his situational batting average against him. It's pretty good when there's nobody on base, but it's rare that he's got no one on base. Coming off a start against, in his last start, rather, five and a third innings, six hits, six runs, two walks. Nick Markakis with 22 RBIs digs in. Darno's got a good lead. And Nick foul that back off Chris Stewart. No balls and a strike. One of the things we'll keep an eye on tonight is Chris Conroy behind the plate and whether or not he's giving Jeff Locke that outside corner. If he's living out there and getting the call, then good possibility Locke will have a good night.
Nick is four for 12 in the series for Atlanta. He's got 12 doubles overall this year. And the Braves have been racking up two base hits with great regularity. They have at least one double in 10 straight games. One ball, one strike. Freddie Freeman's next. Jeff Francoeur to follow him. Check swing and a line drive into the seats. The protective netting here in Pittsburgh extends to the on deck circle and that line drive hit a youngster right in the head. And she is on her feet and she is being attended to by the Pirates medical staff. I, I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. They've extended the netting in every major league ballpark to the front edge of the dugouts. Why we do not extend them to the far end to protect these fans is just amazing to me. That youngster had no chance. No. At all. None. Sitting right above the dugout. Great seats, they think. One ball, two strikes. And with every motion, you can see Chris Stewart, you can see the Pirates, you can see the umpire looking over in that direction. Yeah. And unfortunately, the game's continuing while they attend to her. They're, they're not paying attention. Another ball could head that way right here. Darno broke goes to the inside of the bag and he's going to be out. So Locke picks off Chase Darno. A 1 3 6 pickoff play one out. I like that Locke picks. He got picked off last night but was able to turn it into a stolen base by getting in the way of the throw from first by Jaso. Not this time Jaso came way into the grass to have a line of sight to second base. We're waiting to see if the Braves agree with that call at second base, and they do. So, no review. Marquecas now with one out and a one two count. And he got the inside corner called. Marquecas caught looking, and quickly two are out. Well, at long last, we're going to get a look at a outfield alignment that Joe considers one of the best in the league, if not the best. Starling Marte is back for the Pirates. Gong, Mercer, Harrison, and Jaso around the horn, and Chris Stewart gets the start. Now, there's not any outfield threesome better. There might be some as good, but none better. And that's out of play by Freddie Freeman the Braves first baseman he's got three hits in the series including his first RBI here in Pittsburgh last night. Swing and a miss nothing in two. Locke was beaten by the Cubs last time out. Six hits, six runs, two walks in five innings and a third. And he didn't get the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. High ERA. Lefties hit him hard. He's given up four homers to right handed batters. But he looks awfully sharp after a walk to Chase Darno. He struck out Marcakis and Freeman, and we head to the bottom of the first.
lifting and it's time for Mike Fulton Evich. He is back on the hill for the Braves looking for his second win. His opponent's batting average is against kind of high with nobody on base. He's trying to throw the ball over the plate make him put it in play. But once they get on base that's when he knuckles down and you can see great numbers for him when he's got guys out there on the sacks his Ford keys to pitching success tonight number one establish inside as hard as he throws once he establishes inside it makes his breaking stuff that much better and he's developing a comfort level with this new way of just holding back a little bit 94 95 go to 97 98 when he needs it a lot of confidence riding with Mike Fulton Evans tonight who faces John Jaso leading off and his first of the night is over the corner at 94 for a strike. Jaso as we've told you this whole series is a terrific leadoff man for the Pirates hitting well over 300 in the first inning. And that made him move his feet one ball one strike. jaso has got four hits two RBIs in the first three games against the Braves. That is hit the other way a leadoff single for Jaso. didn't hit it hard but that ball found a hole it's a leadoff single in the bottom of the first. Not a bad pitch down at the middle of the plate at 97. Good piece of hitting. Fulton Evans has never faced the Pirates before. So his first look at Andrew McCutcheon, who's three for 14 in the set with two RBIs and hitting 248. That is not like Andrew McCutcheon. He swings the first pitch and pops it a mile high. Marcakis looks over to Malik Smith who comes charging in and makes the play. One pitch takes care of Andrew McCutcheon. One on one out. Here's a look at the rest of the Braves defense. Jeff Francoeur is in left. Castro in for Ibar at short. Darno and Beckham at third and second. Tyler Flowers another start with a lefty on the mound for the Pirates. Can't say enough about the job Julio Tehran did last night and how good Atlanta's defense looked last night. Enciarte was running all over the outfield, tracking fly balls down. Julio was pitching inside, pitched seven and two thirds innings of great work. It's nice to see. But here's the man Atlanta has not gotten out in this series, at least not much. Gregory Polanco is seven out of 14. And he jumps on the first one. Didn't get much on it. Malik Smith to his left. And after the base hit by Jaso, two pitches means two soft flyouts for Fulty here in the first. Well, you gotta like that. One pitch out. Jung Ho Gong is in at third base again. Pirates in the papers today said this two days on, one day off return plan for him after his leg surgery last season is by the boards now. They will evaluate how frequently he can play depending on how he feels. And he has had a terrific run with five homers already this year, including one last night. Yeah, he didn't miss a high hanging slider from Viscaino. Jaso with a short lead at first. And Gong didn't get it. This is what Mike didn't do against the Mets. Yeah. He was in such a hurry to make a pitch that he got whacked. But a much different mound presence. As that one's taken high and away. Well, as we said that night, there's a difference between working quickly and rushing. And as he admitted, I he, he said I was just 
going way too fast, not even breathing. And we said it at the time, we, we couldn't remember a pitcher getting the ball and throwing it to the plate as quickly as he was. About 13 seconds between pitches against New York. But after that first inning, he's, as you've said, been a different guy. Very effective. And coming off a big win against the Royals where he didn't give up a run. And Gong got hit again. Tehran got him last night. Fultonevich gets him tonight in the first inning. And the Pirates have two on and two out. Got hit in the back left pocket last night. This time on the back of the knee, and I think that's his bad knee. The left one. He tore up that knee September 17th against the Cubs. Chris Coglin with the slide at second base here at PNC Park. A fractured tibial plateau and damage to the lateral meniscus. And here is Starling Marte. Didn't have to face him the first three games of the series, and boy, he's having a great year. And that one is cut on and missed. It bounces off of Tyler Flowers and the runners move up 90 feet. Talked about this entire road trip and especially in this series about keeping the Pirates and or the Kansas City Royals off the board early. And that ought to be a pass ball and it's late movement off the glove of Tyler Flowers. Braves entered the game last night with a 7 11 first inning ERA. Tehran did not, not give up a first inning run. Fultonevich has runners in scoring position with two outs and an 0 1 count to the Pirates outfielder. And a shot into shallow right. It's going to drop. And it's going to score two. Of course it is. Because that's what happens every time the Braves make a mistake. Marte hasn't played for three days and he comes back his first at bat and fights one off that was up and in and dumps it in. So the hit batsman hurts Gong, but it hurts Fultonevich even worse. A blue pit to right brings home. Two Pirates. And here's Josh Harrison. Harrison has four hits in the series. And Mike missed outside. One ball, no strikes. Stick to your plan. Don't get mad. Probably hot around the collar after that one dropped in because he thought he made a good pitch. So don't just start airing it out. Keep pitching. That'll do. Two balls and a strike. Harrison's hit seventh in the lineup card for the Pirates this whole series. He moves up to sixth with the addition of Chris Stewart to the lineup. Cervelli gets the night off. You got to figure two runs are nowhere near enough tonight for the Pirates. Jeff Locke with a five and a half ERA and a career five ERA against Atlanta. Harrison very late two balls two strikes. Remember he had two strikes on on uh, gone too when he hit him. 
Jordy Mercer's on deck. Two nothing Pittsburgh. Two singles, a hit batsman, and a pass ball. Runner goes, ground ball left side. Castro can't handle it. All hands are safe. Don't know if Darno could have cut it off or not, but he gave way to Castro and the ball was fumbled away and Pittsburgh has him first and second. Yeah, I don't think it distracted Daniel by on the fielding part. He just didn't make the transfer. Settling trip out by Roger McDowell. None of these balls have been hit hard. No, but it, it's just kind of a, re, a repeat that we keep say, seeing early in the game. Uh, not necessarily pitcher's fault, giving up weak hits, a mistake or two, and all of a sudden it's uh, as tonight, two to nothing. Jordy Mercer with a four for ten series. And that one's popped up. Foul ground. Long run Freeman. He's not going to get there. It's into the stands. Nothing in two. Very little foul territory here at PNC Park. Another foul ball, same spot. Drive to center and right at Malik Smith. Pittsburgh scores two runs on three soft singles and a hit batsman and pass ball hurt as well. Two nothing after one. Long for Starling Marte to make his presence felt part of a terrific outfield trio in Pittsburgh as you'll see on our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. Marte three straight 30 stolen base seasons won a gold glove last year. McCutcheon you know about him and as a former MVP and Gregory Polanco 51 doubles since 2015 that's the most among National League outfielders and he's leading the National League in doubles right now with 16. Hitting 2.50. 
299 as a group. That's not too shabby either. So we head to the second. Two nothing Pirates. Jeff Francoeur will lead off. Jeff has a hit in the series. That hit was his first home run of the season. Francoeur, Flowers, and Beckham. And that's fouled out of play. It's quickly 0 and 2. Joe mentioned Jeff Locke came to the Pirates with Charlie Morton in the deal that sent Nate McLeod to the Braves. There's a shot to right, base hit for Jeff. Leadoff single is a good start to the inning. Nate McLeod, one of the great mysteries. When the Braves got him from the Pirates, everybody thought, wow, gold glove outfielder, near 290 hitter, power, speed. Catches everything, but for whatever reason in Atlanta, it just never clicked for Nate. It didn't come with him on the plane. Yeah. I, I don't know why. And a lot of people wondered how in the world did the Braves pry him away from the Pirates? Well, it just so happened they had another guy waiting in the wings. Worked named, out okay for him, didn't it? Named McCutcheon. Tyler Flowers takes a ball high. He's had a good series. He's had a good last seven games. Again. If you hit you play. But this part of the Braves catching platoon situation lefty on the mound might be advantage Braves tonight. I love what Tyler said after the game last night. That. Even though he hit a home run he said I was more proud of catching a good game for Julio and getting him his first win. He said that's so much more important to me is helping our pitchers. Yeah, Julio said he really feels comfortable working with Tyler Flowers, like they're on the same page with their game plan, their execution. And we've seen Matt Whistler have great success with AJ Przinsky. I wonder if that's something that we'll see continue, irrespective of who's on the mound for the opponent this year. Uh, it could be. It could well be if if the pitchers are more comfortable that way. And Locke walks Flowers after giving a two run lead. He gives up a single and a base on balls. And Gordon Beckham's coming up and he's tearing the cover off the ball lately. Again with Locke, you, you, if you're patient, you're going to get a hitter's count. And there's a chance he'll walk you if you give him half a chance. Just don't be too antsy to go up there and swing at the very first offering. Tyler Flowers, by the way, is the player rep. I didn't know that for the Braves. Players Association player rep for the team. That carries responsibility, but it also tells you the respect his teammates have for him. Two on, nobody out for Gordon Beckham. First pitch popped up. Harrison drifts out. He'll give way in right to Gregory Polanco. There's that first pitch. So Daniel Castro hits with two aboard and one out. Hard to question Gordon the way he's been swinging the bat and he's been hitting the ball to all fields leading the team in batting average. But you gotta you gotta know what kind of trouble this guy's been having. Daniels at 207 for the year. Let's see if he can wave a magic wand. The pitch to him is a strike. Fly ball center McCutcheon is there and two are out. Braves have their pitcher hitting eighth tonight. That means it's Mike Fulton Evich's turn with two outs and two on. Tough start for Jeff Locke on the season. 7.24 ERA his first three times out. His last four have been better. Certainly an opponent's batting average of 209 is impressive except for the walks. What what he makes up for in lack of hits allowed, he makes up for in putting guys on base and 
the free category. One ball, no strikes for Fultonevich. And a good cut. The last time we saw Jeff Locke, there was talk that he was pitching for his spot in rotation for the Pirates. That might still be true. They have a couple of really talented pitchers down at AAA Indianapolis. Most notably, Jamison Tyon, who had a great start his last time out. He's knocking at the door of the big leagues. And Tyler Glass now is the other youngster that Pittsburghers are very, very high on. Tyon's been a little slow to get to the big leagues by comparison to another guy in the same draft, Garrett Cole. And, and I don't know if it's because of injuries, if he had some elbow trouble or something like that that slowed down his progress. Tommy John. Was it? For Tyon. Yep. Okay. 2 2 pitch is tipped and caught by Stewart. And what looked like a very promising inning for the Braves. A little impatience cost him in the second inning. 2 0 Pirates. In sports. Pittsburgh leads 2 0 early here at PNC Park. And it's time for tonight's Cold Hard Facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Since the first inning of that game in New York, excellent ERA, low batting average against, and look at that, just one walk against 14 strikeouts in those 17 plus innings. Got to get back to his pitching plan after giving up two runs in the first that were not all his fault. And he's got the bottom part of the Pirates lineup card to play with here Stewart, Locke, and then John Jaso. Stewart and Cervelli, the catching combo for the Pirates. And the first misses low, one ball, no strikes. Pretty much one stop shopping for the Pirates to go get their catching core. Like Cervelli, Chris Stewart was acquired from the Yankees. They got him after the 2013 season. Two 
two balls and a strike. It's always been a solid receiver. Done a good job of keeping himself in shape too. Chris 34 years young now. And an even count. First broke in with the White Sox in 2006. Played in Texas, San Diego, San Francisco, the Yankees, and now the Pirates. And a flinch, but no call. Full count. Good pitch to double up on his breaking ball. Thought he'd get the call, and really surprised Stewart didn't swing. He swung at that one. Little tapper. Fulty bare hand. Fires a strike to first. Nice play. And Mike comes up looking at his pitching hand after he made that play. Good job of bouncing over there to get it. He says he's good to go. We'll follow that as the evening progresses. Here's Jeff Locke, one for nine with four strikeouts. Ball one. Sometimes when you pick a baseball up in a hurry and you don't have a chance to set it in there with the seams the way you want it or whatever, you can get the seam. Catch the seam right behind the pad of your finger, like out on the end of your finger. Mm -hmm. And when you let it go, it's like a burn. It's almost like a rope burn that comes off your fingertip from the seam. Well, he didn't throw a change up to first, no. so I can imagine that might have been what he felt. That's why I wish pitchers, if they have time, like in that case with the catcher running, Use the glove, not that bare hand. It's a safer way. He's had to throw a lot of pitches. He's gone to a full count to Jeff Locke. Round ball towards second. Beckham's got it. And there's the second out. Jaso with an opposite field single scored on Marte's two out hit in the opening inning. As we told you last night, Jaso's a neat story from a defensive standpoint. This guy's a former major league catcher. And he's made the transition to first base very, very well for Pittsburgh. And Sean Rodriguez, a nice platoon at first base. That would miss low. One ball, no strikes. It's kind of odd. Jaso leads off for this ball club, and he's got a very high on base percentage, 374 coming into play tonight. 354, beg your pardon. But he's only scored 15 runs, 16 now. And Polanco with 28 leads their team hmm. batting third. Well how much of that is Andrew McCutcheon. He's got eight homers 18 RBIs but for McCutcheon of a low batting average only yeah. 246 to 47 now. That could be it. And Polanco's hitting a ton of doubles. And doesn't have to go as far. <laughs> yeah good point. Jaso rips one toward the right center field gap and that's going to roll for a while. He's got a double for sure. He's going to make the turn. He's going to try. Here comes the throw. It is on target but it bounces off Darno and Jaso has a two out triple. Love this guy's swing. Very small, short, compact. He's got a short press back to get the bat started and good hands. 
And he couldn't have rolled that one any more perfectly between the two outfielders. Braves handled the relay well. Jason just outran the baseball. Here are those on base percentages. Their team as a whole second in the National League. And Jason two for two tonight. And six for 12 in the series. Now McCutcheon with a runner at third. Two outs takes a strike. Didn't like it. Nothing in one. Only man with more homers in the two spot on a lineup card of the National League is Trevor Story with the Rockies. McCutcheon has eight. Story has hit 11. On that fastball. Swing and a miss. Mike might be a little angry. I think he thought he had Jaso struck out. He got a pitch on the house and didn't miss it. He's got McCutcheon behind one and two. Two nothing Pittsburgh both runs in the first inning. I think I'd be inclined to try that breaking ball again. So off stride on the one before. Into the Pirates' dugout, foul still two and two. Two balls, two strikes. A lot of deep counts for Fulton Evich. Touching in the 11th man he's faced. It looked like he's going to be an easy first inning, too, after Jaso reached. He got two outs on two pitches from McCutcheon and Polanco, and then trouble set in when he got ahead of Kong and hit him. McCutcheon shoots one the other way. A two out single brings home Jay So to make it three to nothing. Well, as the old saying go, Marte's and McCutcheon's hits will look like line drives in the paper tomorrow, and they are in virtually the same place, up and in and fought off. You can see the reaction of Mike Fultonevich. But of the first 11 Pirates hitters, five have had a three ball count tonight. That is not the way Mike had been pitching coming no. into this game. So here's Polanco, McCutcheon at first. And a strike. Got Polanco flush. 0 oh and 2. Or really, Al and 2. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it got him on the shin above the ankle. That probably left a mark. Yeah, it looked, it looked like a golf ball looking lump on there, too. So 
Well, Mike at 50 pitches. All of his trouble tonight has come with two outs. Certainly done that tonight. He has pitched inside. And he got burned on two right handers on pitches up and in that they fought off for RBI hits. But he has tried to establish that inside pitch to both lefties and righties. So McCutcheon will take off. Full count, two outs. Another run in for the Pirates. The pitch is sky toward left center field and deep. Malik Smith on the run. That ball is gone. Wow. I don't remember any left hand hitters hitting the ball out like that in this ballpark. That was impressive, folks. Breaking ball too, outside part of the plate. That is some kind of strength to go out over that 4-10 mark in deep left center, deepest part of the ballpark. So the Pirates have five two-out runs tonight. As Young Ho Gong is the hitter, he was hit by a pitch. And scored on the Marte hit in the first. I mean, when that ball left the bat, I knew it was trouble because of the location going to that corner out there. Figured, well, he's got another double. I was short by two bases. The pitch was only 80 miles an hour. I can only imagine what the amount of backspin was on that ball to have it sail out of here and left. Because Mike Fulton didn't provide the power on that shot. No. Polanco did that himself. His 10th run scored in the last seven games and Braves are tired of seeing him. He has had a great series. That's down the line foul. And it's a 2 2 count to the Pittsburgh third baseman, Young Ho Gong. Ice cream cone survived. Pitch, swing and a miss, and that retires the side. First strikeout for Fulton Evich. First home run of the night is hit by the Pirates. Gregory Polanco goes opposite field on an 80 mile an hour breaking ball. Five nothing burgers after two.
SunTrust Park season tickets are on sale now and they start at as little as $7 a game for A-list members. Act fast to get the best seats before they're gone. Go to Braves.com slash SunTrust Park and secure your tickets today. Five nothing as we head to the top of the third inning Pittsburgh leads here in game four. Malik Smith ready to lead things off for Atlanta and he's our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. Check it out last four games 429 average. A double a triple two homers and five RBIs in those four games. He's got three homers on the season. Doing it. And fans were asking to repeat what we talked about in the pregame show why Alex didn't play last night having a two home run game the night before here in Pittsburgh. One Liriano's tough for right handers to hit as another ball goes screaming into the stands above the pirate dugout. I don't know how I'd miss that one gentleman. Well. The simple answer for that is uh, I'm not going to put little pop and in foul ground nice running catch by Marte to take care of Alex. I'm not going to put Francisco Liriano in the Bumgarner Kershaw uh, category but he's not that far off in terms of left handed hitters having to deal with him because he's got a funny arm angle tough to pick up and he's hard on left handed hitters so why subject Malix to that there will be a time for it somewhere down the road. He's two for twenty five now against lefties but you love his defense you love what he's been doing at the plate recently and as we said with Jeff Locke he's one of those reverse lefties lefties hit him better than the righties do so a chance for Malix to see a left hander and maybe have a better chance at success tonight. We got a long way to go. The Braves were down a whole lot more than this earlier in this series. Let's see if they can wage a comeback against Jeff Locke. One ball, one strike for Darno, who walked to begin the game for the Braves. And he strokes one toward right center field. That's going to get down for a hit. Polanco with that sore leg, you might recall, got to it and threw a strike to second. Pretty play. And Darno keeps on hitting. He's aboard with one out. I'm just really enjoying watching Darno play. Watch him here as he rounds the bag hard, just in case the ball got by Polanco. Chase is having a good run. Nick Marquez took a call, third strike, his first time up. Darno with his lead at first. He's going on the first move. Stewart's throw to second is going to be well late. So Darno steals his second base of the season. And he's in scoring position. One man down. And getting thrown out, getting picked off, didn't deter him. He went on the first pitch this time. So a hit means a run for Marcakis, the team leader in RBIs with 22. One ball, one strike. Right off his thumbs. Gong at third. Double clutches and got him at first. Darno to third, two outs. This one had to hurt. Nick fighting that one off. Nice play by Gong to get him.
Darno at third, two outs for Freddie Freeman. He struck out in his loaded bat. And that's inside ball one. Pittsburgh hopes to pick up a game in the standings. The Brewers beat the Cubs today in Milwaukee. That was a 5 3 final. The Pirates start play tonight, seven and a half games out of first in the National League Central. Bounced into the seats to the right side foul one and two. Washington leads the Mets two to one. Daniel Murphy hit a home run off Matt Harvey early in that game. It's now in the top of the third inning in New York. Murphy's had a nice return to his old haunts. Ripped foul and the fans in New York gave Murphy a standing ovation. His first at bat. And I underline the word first. <laughs> After that, he was the enemy again. And he has been tonight for the Nationals. Lead the Phillies by a half game, the Mets by a game and a half in our division. One two pitch. Strike three. An inside corner changeup, it looked like, froze Freddie Freeman. And he talks about that with Chris Conroy. Freeman's down on strikes for a second time. The Braves are out of luck in the third inning. Five nothing Pirates. Welcome back, everybody. Pirates lead 5-0 in the bottom of the third. And I got to tell you this, former President Jimmy Carter said, hey, testing is best done when you're alone. Well, sorry to say in baseball, that doesn't happen. You're exposed to everybody on TV in the stands. A big test for Mike fulton tonight after getting off to a rough start is to see if he can get his teammates to the sixth, seventh inning and save that bullpen a little bit. Paul it's no fun I'm sure when you're on the mound and you're on a roll like Mike has been to have the kind of start he has had tonight. What does a pitcher learn about himself in situations like this facing a Pirates team that's trying to get hot itself. So he is rediscovering again the importance of relaxing and hitting your spots. He has not made horrible pitches. He missed his spots. An example is the one to McCutcheon was 98 up and in on the hands. I got to applaud McCutcheon for hitting it, but that ball was supposed to be down and away. Freddie Freeman to the first row of seats. He can't make the play. Well, I, I make it akin to a, a hitter, Paul, who's right on pitches and hitting line drives right at people all over the park. Uh, you're hitting in bad luck tonight. Fulton as you said has made a couple of pitches that weren't bad pitches and had horrible results from it. It's yes hard, hard I agree to take, hard to take. 
I agree. And at times he's had trouble putting people away. And it, it, well, they're on me, so now I'm going to overthrow and make a miss. And sometimes that uh, doesn't have the results you would hope for. As you see, there's another foul off. Yeah, a lot of three two counts, a lot of three ball counts, a lot of foul balls from Fulton Evick so far. I don't think anybody would have expected after two innings that Jeff Locke had more strikeouts than Mike. No, but that's where we are tonight. As Marte, proud new papa of a baby girl, bounces one towards short. Castro gloves, throws on the run, and got Marte for the first out. Here's Harrison. Josh has an infield hit tonight. He was left stranded after Mercer lined out to end the Pirates first. We are off to Philadelphia after the game tonight. A three game series starts at Citizens Bank tomorrow night. Matt Whistler and Aaron Nola. That'll be a good matchup. Two outs. And here's Mercer. He's 0 for 1 in the game. After the Braves leave town, the Pirates will continue their homestand. The Rockies and the Diamondbacks will be coming to town next. Looking forward to seeing that Colorado team too. What an infield they have with Nolan Arenado and Trevor Story at third and short. We'll see the Rockies in Atlanta right after the All-Star break. No balls, two strikes. Guy's made himself into a pretty good hitter. Pretty much thought of in many circles as you know, good fielding, shortstop, kind of a backup, utility type guy. Well, not so much anymore. That was fouled away. Flowers heard the tick, but he thought that was off of his. Catcher's gear. But that was a late foul ball call by Correct. Chris Conroy. Mercer knew he got a piece of it. No balls, two strikes. Stairs, it's a ball and two strikes. And a line drive with two strikes for Mercer. He's been a tough out for Atlanta in this series. In fact, this has been a tough place for the Braves to pitch. They've given up now. 38 runs scored in the last seven games played at PNC Park to the Pirates. Inside breaking ball, you can see the target was down and away, not down and in. So all Mercer had to do, trying to protect the plate, was drop the barrel on it in case of mislocation again. And the Pirates offense continues to cruise here in the first three innings. Stewart bats, the winner at first and two outs. All five pirate runs have come with two out of the inning. Out 
Ake. Ball and two strikes. Brian Snitker, what an emotional night for him last night. 40 years in the Braves organization. First time he gets to manage in the major leagues, wins his first big league game in his second game managed. This one's hit to short. The flip to second will retire the side. Yeah, that was a celebration for the entire Snitker family. Great night. We head to the fourth. It's time for tonight's greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile up next for the Braves the Phillies. Yeah and they are hot 17 and 8 as you see their last 25 games and they got Aaron Nola going tomorrow night in the first game of that series. He's been outstanding. The Giants have gotten hot. They've taken the lead in the National League West and their pitching is beginning to step up for them. Chris Sale what a start for the Chicago White Sox. He'll try to go to 9 and 0 tonight against the Astros. The Astros, by the way, have Evan Gaddis back in the lineup, and Evan Gaddis is catching for the Astros. The first time he's caught a game since he played for the Braves. So we'll see how that goes for Houston tonight. They are underway at U.S. Cellular Field. No score in the first. Here it's five nothing Pirates, and Frank Poor leads off the Braves fourth. Five runs, seven hits for Pittsburgh. No runs, two hits for the Braves. Jeff had the first Atlanta hit of the night. And that was cracked down the right field line and out of play. Way high, two balls and a strike. Along with the change in batting practice approach for Frank Coor that resulted in a home run in the first game of this series. He's employing a much more aggressive swing but still maintaining the contact. Hit the ball hard even foul balls are hit hard. That one's bounced foul for a full count. And Jeff has a two for two night. That one is headed for the gap. It's cut off at that triangle. Jeff's going to try for two. The throw is going to be late. And Frank Coor hustles into second with a leadoff double. Second time tonight, Atlanta's had the leadoff man aboard. And a good play by Marte to keep it from being a triple. Fastball, laced. When Marte got to this ball and wheeled and threw, I thought. McCutcheon was right in line to throw back to second base. He was a little out of out of the way, but it looked closer than that. 
Again, so. Marte a gold glove last year. So let's see if the Braves can put together a big inning of their own. Tyler Flowers has walked tonight. One ball, one strike. Lock got to the big leagues in 2011 for the Pirates. As that's one shot into the right field corner, that's a base hit. Here comes Fran Cora around to score. Flowers on his way to second. He's going to slide in. Back to back doubles for the Braves. They're on the board. It's a 5 1 game. Eighth RBI for the Braves catcher. He's now hit it five straight games and continues to swing a good bat. A lot of his hits this year have come to right field. This one down the line. Long run over there for Polanco. And Tyler able to take an extra base. Straight places. Here's Beckham. He swung at the first pitch with two on and nobody out. Let's see if he's a little more selective his second time up. He took that one. It was a strike. Ball to short. Mercer, good glove man, made a slick play. Beckham's retired. He's 0 for 2, and here's Daniel Castro. One thing for Daniel over this stretch where his batting average has plummeted a little bit, he's one of those guys that goes to the plate and it's 0 and 2 a lot. And that's taken away some of his aggressiveness. And one of the things I like most about him offensively is his ability to ambush some pitches inside and turn on them. He hasn't been pulling the ball much at all. That's taken downstairs. Yeah, when he hits the ball, he's been hitting it to the right side between first and second. And look at how the Pirates line up defensively in this at bat. Yeah, he's done that because I think he's. Maybe feeling for the ball a little bit behind in the count, trying to guard the plate. Pulled that one, but was out in front. They got a change up. Again, Castro wasn't in the lineup originally. Eric Ibar was. We are told that Ibar was treated at a local medical facility for a chicken bone that got stuck in his throat. He underwent a procedure to remove the object, but it dislodged itself and was not in place when the procedure was taking place. Bouncing ball. That one is hit to shortstop. Mercer's got it. Runner to third. Two outs. And because Ivar had to be sedated for the procedure, he's unavailable to play tonight. And already the blogosphere is saying that is the weirdest injury of the year so far in 2016. Yeah, and scary too. So the night is done for Mike Fulton Evich. He pitches three innings, gives up five runs, all of them with two outs. Brian Snitker will call on Reed Brignac. Try to pick up a two out run for the Braves. Take your shot if you can well, get the single a little closer. The yeah. Pirates bullpen hasn't been invincible. No, I, I, I fully support this move. Uh, you'd like to save the bullpen a little bit, but the Braves made a move a couple of nights ago. They sent Aaron Blair back to Gwinnett, called up John Gant. He's well rested and a long guy. He's not the guy up. That's Eric O'Flaherty, who appears to be ready to go in the bullpen. 
Julio Tehran gave everybody a night off last night except Vizcaino. That's outside. Three balls, no strikes. Well, let's see if Brignac can reach and maybe Malik can pop one. The other side of things for Brian Snitker is that with Castro forced into duty, he has no right handed hitters on the bench, all lefties. Brignac was on his way to first, instead, it's a full count. It's all right, drive him in. And in this case, that doesn't really hurt you. Again, Locke goes up a 324 average to lefties. So it's full count, two outs, runner at third. Braves are on the board. Pitch is cut on and missed. And the side is retired. Braves got back to back doubles, settled for one in the fourth, 5 1 game in Pittsburgh. And the Giants Friday, May 27th through Memorial Day, Monday, May 30th. We've got the Chipper and Freddie ATV bobblehead on the 28th, and Chris Stapleton performs after the game on the 29th. Beautiful night in Pittsburgh. The Pirates ambushed Mike Fultonevich for five runs in three innings. Brian Snitker goes to his bullpen, and it's Eric O'Flaherty on to face Locke, Jaso, and McCutcheon. Yeah, and Eric's getting his ERA whittled down after giving up a bunch of runs early in the season. He's only given up one earned run in his last five outings. And out of those five outings, a couple of them have been multiple innings of work. Recorded as an inning and a third, but you can pretty much rack that up as two innings of work. So. Perhaps the Braves can get a multiple inning out of Eric. Lock rolled out to second to start his night offensively. That was in the Pirates second. And O'Flaherty is ready to go. Balls, one strike. To short. 
long throw and Freeman stretches out at first. There's out number one. And here's Jaso. Got to figure out a way to retire this man. He's two for two, a single, a triple, and he scored two of the five Pittsburgh runs. And Pedro Alvarez is no longer a pirate. They needed a first baseman to get on base and catch the ball at first. And Jaso certainly done that. Alvarez went to the American League, didn't he? Baltimore, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. That's off Eric O'Flaherty. It bounces to Freeman at first in foul ground. He makes the play. Let's check and see if O'Flaherty's all right. That ball ricocheted a good 70 feet to the right side in first base. Jaso's out number two. Says he's okay. Play by Freddie to play the ricochet. So here's Andrew McCutcheon. His second inning base hit ties in with Jack Wilson for the most hits in the history of PNC Park. Both now with 612 hits at home. McCutcheon already the all time home run leader here. Pop out to Castro. He's got it. And that's a very easy inning for Eric O'Flaherty. Nicely done, Eric. Three up, three down. Was presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. 5 1 Pittsburgh. We head to the fifth inning. Wow, oh, that's great. Crazy. Great view. Looking right into the ballpark from across the river. You must have shot that from your palatial suite. No, that was uh, Gary Lehman's. <laughs> Gary actually ran out of the truck, across the bridge, up to the top floor. Sent that back. Malik's with a butt. Gong at third. Got him by a step. Nice play. Well, I can promise you this. Gary's the only man on our crew in good enough shape to do that. Actually, our man Sean did that, I'm told. And not Gary, but Gary probably told him to. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have Gary Lehman back after a super year. Directing the Hawks games. Brian Woodrum's our producer. Gretchen Caney, our AD tonight. And 
Uh, cast of thousands doing a great job here in Pittsburgh where the Braves are trying to even up this series of two games apiece. As we said yesterday it is a new start. We turned the page Braves played great last night. Fulte ran into two out trouble in his three innings tonight but even down four this is still anybody's ball game if Atlanta can tack on a couple more and get into that Pittsburgh Pirate bullpen. No is singled he's walked he's stolen a base he's been picked off. And that one's dumped down the right field line that's a fair ball that's going to bounce into the stands that'll be a double for Darno he's got two more hits tonight. And the Braves run of two base hits has continued they have three doubles. Okay, well, this guy can run the bases. He hated to see that bounce into the seats over there down the line. He was thinking triple. Long strides. Get the bag in turn, and then right there is like, ah. Settle for two. Hey, Paul Bird, are you online down there? I am here. I have a question for you, and it goes to uh, Mike Fultonevich tonight and the young rotation of the Braves. You know, we were excited. We are excited about seeing these guys in every turn coming around because they represent a lot of the future of the Braves, potential starters in the rotation. But isn't a night like tonight, I'm not making excuses for Mike, but isn't a night like tonight something we are going to have to Swinging butt back to the mound. Locke takes care of Nick Marquez. Some inconsistencies. We're going to have to get used to some inconsistencies. They're going to have their share of bad nights. Absolutely. People forget that Maddox first year in the big leagues got a five and a half. Glavin struggled. Smoltz was the only one that did well, but then he struggled the next year. So there's just times where you have to, I call it growing pains. You just have to accept. They're going to be learning up here, and, and you know, there's times where even if you have four, five, six years in the minors, you come up here, it's a different game. You're learning even then. So I think that this is going to make the pitchers better. Even Aaron Blair's night the other night, we don't like the outcome, seven runs in the first inning, but it is going to make him better over the long haul. You're going to learn what you have to do up here at the big league level. And there's no better teacher than getting up here and, and experiencing. Failure and success. Yeah, and, and Fulton Evich tonight, this is only his 18th start in the big leagues. So, you know, we may, we've, we get spoiled again because he had two really good outings, but he hasn't pitched that much at this level. Right, and the biggest outing for me will be his next outing, Joe, where we get to see if he overthrows or if he just says, hey, I had a bad night. I'm going to continue to try and hit my spot and pitch. So that next outing will be very important for me. That'll come at home. Braves will host the Brewers, the Marlins, and the Giants on a long home stand. Let's see if Freddie can make some contact. He has struck out twice once swinging, once looking. He's behind the count here, one and two. Out the way. That's near the Braves' dugout. I'll tell you what, the Brewers got a couple of good pitchers, too. There's a good chance the Braves are going to see Jimmy Nelson, I think, pitch last night. Junior Guerra went today and struck out 11 Cubs. Mm. He's the guy that was pitching in Italy a couple of years ago. I bet he was good over there, too. Probably so. One ball, two strikes. And Freeman pops one toward left. That will take care of Atlanta in inning number five. Darno left stranded. 5 1 Pittsburgh, home fifth.
what is wrong with Matt Harvey. Yeah it's hard to figure. We saw him pitch in New York and pitched OK. I think he went five innings and got a win but he didn't look that sharp. Is this a hangover from those extra innings that Harvey pitched last year. Remember there was so much uh, media coverage with Scott Boris and the Mets about how much you should pitch should he shut it down. Would he be able to pitch in the playoffs coming back from his Tommy John surgery. You know I think only he can answer that right. And he has not used that as an excuse. He says he feels good. He feels strong. He did have some. He had some weird thing going on in spring training though didn't he. Uh, kidney stone or no, that's what they, the bladder infection bladder infection. He had a bladder infection. Okay. Yeah. Nothing which, arm related. Which set him back. A bit. But. The whole foundation of the Mets success is that fantastic five rotation and right now Harvey is the fifth best guy. Tell you what right now he is just treading water. The Mets have him treading water until Zach Wheeler's ready. Zach Wheeler comes back whenever that is Harvey might his spot might be in jeopardy. And this is a hugely important year for Matt Harvey. I believe he's a free agent at the end of this season. I think that's right. I may, may be incorrect, but either way, the Dark Knight, one of the terrific young pitchers in New York, has tripped on his cape. Swing, fly ball, hammered toward right. Marquez is back to the scoreboard. It's high off the scoreboard, and that ricochets back toward the infield. And streaking toward third and sliding in safely is Gregory Polanco. He has been the MVP of this series for the Pirates. That's nine hits for him. And he has been running like a stallion on the base pass. I want to tell you something. It's hard to hit a triple here to right field. He wasn't busting it out of the box until he saw it hit the wall. And he still made it to third. Look at those strides. Goodness. That's a big man. And that's going to be it for Eric O'Flaherty. Eric goes an inning plus. He allows a hit. And Atlanta goes ever deeper into its bullpen. 5 1 Pirates. John Gant. He's on for the fourth time. Gant did a good job down in Gwinnett. Six games, 33 strikeouts with the Gwinnett Braves. Yeah, he was starting down there, so he's been stretched out, certainly in a position to work long relief here. If the Braves need him to, he's the guy 
with the Vulcan changeup. Remember, that's right. And as we know, the Braves heading to Philly have not announced a starter for their game on Sunday. So if Gant goes a couple here, I'm guessing that would maybe take him out of consideration for that assignment. There's a lot of options, a lot of choices. First man up is Jung Ho Gong, who's been hit by a pitch and struck out. And that's in for a strike. Gant was recalled on April 27th, went four and two third innings against the Red Sox at Fenway Park. Did not make another appearance before he went down. Fly ball left. Francoeur drifts toward left center, makes the catch. Polanco is going to tag, and he is going to score to make it 6 1. That run goes to Eric O'Flaherty. 11th RBI for Gong, his third of the series. can understand when you watch the Pirates as we have for four days why everybody on their team is in double digits and RBIs they don't miss a time they don't miss an opportunity to drive somebody in well and two, as Marte digs in you have a guy in Mike Fulton who started this game tonight who has great stuff throws ninety seven miles an hour. One strikeout for the Pirates offense tonight. You talk about their on base percentage. They take their walks. They put the ball in play. They don't hit a ton of home runs. But this is a tough lineup to work your way through. And now that Gong is back, pretty impressive group. Beckham at second. Hardly had to move. He gets his man for the second out. And I know you've said it early in the season. I know they're. Moment, seven and a half games behind the Cubs, but I can see why you like this Pirate team. We haven't seen Garrett Cole yet. No, but if they can fix the back end of their rotation, get their bullpen straightened out, I, <laughs> this team's going to score a lot of runs, and they're going to do it differently than they did last year when they hit a ton of homers with Neil Walker and Pedro Alvarez. Well, they've got a bulldog ace in Garrett Cole. Now, would he be at number one on every staff? No. But he is on this staff, and he is quite a competitor. Gets after it. Likes the spotlight, likes big games. That's what you want from your number one pitcher. And he's not afraid to say what's on his mind either. He raised some eyebrows in that just completed series with the Cubs. When they won the last game two to one to salvage one out of the first six head to head with Chicago, Cole was asked about what does it feel to beat the best team in the National League? He said, I don't think the Cubs are the best team in the National League. And I don't think he was taking a shot at Chicago. I think he was saying baseball hasn't seen the best of the Pirates yet. Agreed. So again a nice job to get out of further trouble in the fifth the sack fly adds to the Pirates lead it's six one and we head to the sixth.
Center has been the destination for Braves merchandise for over 30 years. Check out the large selection of Braves merchandise, including Turner Field final season apparel. Go to the Braves Clubhouse store at CNN Center or call 404-523-5854. Chip Joe and Paul with you from PNC Park. It's once again a five run lead for Jeff Locke. He led five nothing after two. Jeff ran Coors two for two and has a mighty cut and fouls it straight back. See these are these are much bigger swings. I'm not going to say longer swings. They are full swings. He's following through on it. He's not just trying to feel for the ball and he's hitting the ball hard. Swing and a fly ball belted deep left field. Jeff Francoeur has his second home run. Grip it and rip it. That gets that run back from the last half inning. Maybe a change up. Zaxby's indescribably good play. Locke knew where it was headed. So did Jeff. First three hit game for Fran Coor on the season. It's now six to two. Jeff needs a triple for the cycle. As Tyler Flower digs in, he's walked and doubled home a run. Well, for a club that was struggling mightily to hit home runs, the Braves have certainly found the home run stroke on this road trip. That's good to see. And as you said last night, next on the list, having some men aboard for those homers. Strike three, Flowers took that. And he's down on strikes for the first time. Let's take a look at the side swing, a side angle on this swing from Frank Coor. And just watch the follow through. Great point of contact and a full finish. There was absolutely no doubt what he was trying to do with that ball. He wasn't trying to hit it back through the middle. He wasn't trying to go to right field. He was putting a good hack on it and launched it. And Jeff told you on the road trip that sometimes you have to practice that during BP. At the beginning of this series, he said, I'm going to take a page out of Kelly Johnson's book, who talked about that and said, To center, McCutcheon glides back. Beckham's retired, two out. It, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know how to compare it, but like a guy who only shoots layups. All of a sudden you forget that you can shoot three pointers you know and you haven't practiced it any and for these guys have been working on real hard on making contact staying within the inside the baseball hitting the ball up the middle trying to move runners and Jeff said you know I'm not even sure I know how to lift the ball anymore so that's what they were going to try to work on a little bit. And he's hit two and Kelly's hit one in this series. Daniel Castro is 0 for 2. Let's take it low. One ball, one strike. Braves had nine homers all year. They have hit six homers on this road trip. Little pop. Harrison drifts out. He's going to give way to Polanco with those long strides. And Polanco makes the catch to retire the side. Jeff Francoeur is three for three tonight. He has a single, he has a double, and he has his second home run of the series. A mammoth shot into the seats and left. And it's now a 6 2 game.
Two home run, the Pirates over the Braves, 6 2 in the sixth. But let's talk a little John Gant and that crazy pitching motion. Mets catcher and friend Colton Playa, P L A I A, imitated Gant on the side one time in 2013. And Gant said, I don't do that. He said, Yeah, you do. After going back and looking at some video shortly afterwards, he said, wow, I really am doing the stutter step. He started to exaggerate it a little bit more. And the next thing you know, the John Gant stutter step pitching motion was born. Guys, back to you. How do you not know you're doing that? That's my question. <laughs> Come on. He couldn't answer that. Uh, Come on. <laughs> And Paul's right. He was with the Mets. Gant came over with Rob Whalen in the deal for Kelly Johnson and Juan Uribe. That was last July 24th. And Gant was very, very impressive in his double A work last year. Perfect 6 and 0 in 13 starts. And that one is hit hard toward right center field. Smith will play that on a bounce. And the Pirates Jordy Mercer has another hit against the Braves. That's two more tonight and six in the series. Something interesting about Mercer is that he's among the league leaders in batting average at night. He came in hitting 350 at night. So don't talk to him about eye black and sunglasses in day games. He doesn't really want to mess with them. day Jordy games. Jordy Mercer comes from a long line of vampire hitting shortstops. <laughs> Has another hit to lead off the inning. Here's Chris Stewart. Well, they didn't have any lights in Tologo, <laughs> Oklahoma, and had to play in the dark. Uh, strike to the Pirate catcher. Pittsburgh leads it six to two. Clint Hurdle. Is five wins away from sixth all time on the Pittsburgh Pirates win list for managers. Well, they had some good ones here. But Pi Trainer is next on the list. For really? Oh, really? Pi Trainer is the sixth winningest manager. He managed the Buckos from 1934 to 1939. One of the all time Pirate greats. Clint Hurdles also 14 wins away from a thousand victories as a big league skipper. One ball, one strike. And a play foul. Six runs, nine hits for the Pirates. They've only left three on base. You know what Pie Trainer's real name was? I was gonna. I was looking it up. No, I don't. What, what was it? Harold. Harold. I don't know if we'd all remember Harold Trainer, but we sure remember Pie, don't we? I was gonna say. I thought it was gonna be Josh. If your name's Harold, usually your name Josh, right? Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. With Mercer leading it first. And another hit batsman. Stewart got hit by Gant. Two on, nobody out. A lot of hit batsmen in this series yeah. suffered by the Pirates. I'm glad, happy that it hasn't. Developed into something ugly. I think most of the plunkings have been of that variety. Just brushes. Remember, McCutcheon got hit by Julio Tehran here last year and it knocked McCutcheon out of the game. And Locke will try to lay down a bunt. Chuck Tanner managed here. Jim Leland managed here. Danny Murtaugh managed here. Just a tremendous baseball history here in Pittsburgh. And Clint Hurdle has helped 
really revive interest in this team. This franchise was, I don't want to say dead in the water, even with a new ballpark, but there wasn't nearly the excitement about the Pirates five, six years ago that there is now. Of course, winning all the games that they have the last three or four years is going to create that excitement. They've got a good club. They'll try to chase down the Cubs, who, as I said, lost earlier today. Two balls, one strike. Another note on Jeff Locke I mentioned that he was traded for Nate McLeod. Jeff Locke picked up his first big league win against the Braves. And he was, I'm sorry, it was in 2012. He was a second round pick by the Braves in 2006, which Tells you something about his ability coming out of New Hampshire. Throw back to second after Locke tried to bunt and couldn't get it down. He has struck out. And two on, one out, back to the top for John Jaso, who has singled, tripled, and scored twice. Typically, pitchers in the Northeast are. I mean that you really got to do your homework and scout to see these guys because they don't pitch that much. Short high school season, short summer league season. That one scorched down the line beyond the dugout foul. So that's three this in this game. Yeah. That have been scalded into the crowd. Goodness, everybody's okay. Coming to the ballpark, watch the ball when it's in play. No balls and a strike. That youngster who was hit earlier tonight, I believe, has been taken for medical attention. We've not gotten any word, nor do we expect to have any word on his or her condition. Pirates folks were on that immediately. Yeah. First aid. That missed. Two balls and a strike. Try to play again into the second deck. It's two and two. Kekas on the run, plays it on a bounce, runner around third. His throw to the plate is up the line. Mercer scores on a blue pit by Jaso, who drives home his 15th run. And for the Braves, it's a little more deja vu. That's how the Pirates scored in the opening inning. Nothing hit hard, but in perfect spots. Watch how Jaso uses his hands, though, here. He gets jammed. But he got his bat started by moving his hands back and then just used them to fight the ball off. Watch his hands through this. Pulled his hands inside the baseball, got close to the barrel to the ball, didn't hit it hard. I really like his swing. Don't like his hair, but I really like his swing. He's right on top of the plate, too, as yeah, he is. Trusts his hands to handle that. He's had a big night for the Pirates, a three hit game. 7 2 your score now, and Flowers blocks that.
mentioned earlier in the series that Andrew McCutcheon has never knocked in 100 runs in a big league season. Joe correctly pointed out that's because McCutcheon, for many of those years, was a leadoff hitter. He's batting second now, and he's got two Pirates aboard with only one out. That was the Vulcan right there. Good cut, but McCutcheon fouled it straight back. Yeah, boy. Got away with that one. Pretty good fastball, though, 93. To the right side and into the crowd. Two balls, two strikes. Veteran Nick Leva, longtime big league coach for different organizations. This is a textbook example of the Pirates offensive approach this year and more specifically this game. The Braves have a total of one strikeout. Make that two strikeouts now with Gantz in this inning against this Pirate offense. Julio didn't fan that many last night as good as his stuff was. Fan three. Going up and down from 93 to 81 to 92 to 81, and he's still fouling them off. Swing and it was tipped. McCutcheon just did stay alive. Paul, that's got to drive you crazy as a pitcher, doesn't it? As Joe said, changing speeds, moving the ball around, and you can't get the magic pitch to end the at bat. Yeah, these Pirates are pesky. They just don't go away, and that's one of the biggest differences between AAA and the big leagues is you can make a really good pitch. And somehow the big leaguers just find a way to tip it, although I don't know that I saw one there. I didn't either. We heard a tick, but it didn't appear to come off the bat. No. Swing on the house from a cut shot. And he works a full count. Gant's last two outings with Gwinnett. He went six innings, gave up two earned runs, six and two thirds innings, he gave up one earned run. And his turn was coming up when he got called up. Brad Snicker says, Well, I mean, know all about that when your pitcher gets called up that was supposed to pitch tonight. As the Triple A manager, you figure out somebody else. This is the 10th pitch of the at bat. 
And that was a big league at bat by Andrew McCutcheon. He earned that walk. And the bases are loaded, and Atlanta's worst nightmare is coming up. Gregory Polanco, who has nine hits in this series, including a two run homer back in the second. On a breaking ball at 80 miles an hour, out away from him, and he hit it to one of the most difficult spots in the National League, especially for a left handed hitter. But he won't have a chance to face John Gant. Brian Snitker is going to go to his bullpen. Pittsburgh has the bases loaded. Live presented by Xfinity that will follow game four of our series between the Braves and the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll check in with manager Brian Snitker. We'll hear from the Braves clubhouse as we wrap up things here in Pittsburgh and then make our trek across the Keystone State to Philadelphia where we open up a series with the Phillies tomorrow night. Pittsburgh scored five two out runs in the first two innings. They haven't looked back and now Ian Kroll comes in with a big mess. Bases loaded for Pittsburgh one out and a red hot Gregory Polanco coming up. You see that left handed average 143 that's one for seven. This guy's been a tough out to say the least. He's nine for 17 in the series. And Kroll pumps over a strike. Polanco came in hitting 231 against lefty, six for 26 with a homer. Base runners belong to John Gant. Two balls and a strike. Popped up. That's headed for the stands beyond the pirate dugout. One thing's for sure as soon as Ian Kroll got called up, he was firing heat. 95 miles an hour on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. 
Swing and a miss. That got by Flowers. Runner streaking for the plate. There'll be no throw. So Polanco is out. First base was occupied. Stewart comes home on the ball that got away. That extends the lead to eight to two. And Pirates runners are at second and third. It's another ball that hits off the catcher's glove and goes by. I mean, that's how they got their run in the first inning. Their first run. Turning the glove over late. It hits off the heel of the glove. It's happening way too often. Here's Jung Ho Gong, right hand hitter. He's got an RBI tonight. We've said it a lot. We'll keep saying it. The Braves do not have the luxury of defensive mistakes. If they're going to beat teams in Major League Baseball this year, they just don't. They had a pass ball in the first inning that led to a couple of runs. One got away here that scores the eighth run. The game is certainly in the Pirates' favor. They had a drop. In one of the games in the series on a play at the plate where the tag was made AJ had the runner out the ball just came out of his glove. I'm not saying it wasn't a difficult play it was. But that just tells you how. Little room for error there is. When it comes to the Braves defensively. One ball two strikes. Pirates thrilled to have Gong and his bat back in the lineup. They're also thrilled that he had no problems turning a double play last night. When he came across the bag, it was that play that Chris Coglin took him out, broke his leg, and ended his year. Kroll strikes him out, though. That sends our game to the seventh inning. Pittsburgh adds two more runs. It's 8 2 Pirates in front. Slash tickets today. The Marlins have been playing good ball. The Giants, as Joe said, riding a long winning streak right now. And this game heads to the seventh inning. With Ender in Ciarte grabbing a bat, he'll pinch it for Ian Kroll. And that's down the left field line, but that's going to ricochet off the fence. It's 0-2.
to left. And Marte gathers that in. And Sayarte is retired. One man down. And again, if you just joined us and wonder why a lefty pinch hitting against a left handed pitcher, that's all that Brian Snicker has on his bench uh, with a weird circumstance just before the start of the game. Eric Ibar had a chicken bone caught in his throat, was rushed to the hospital. Alex Smith got sawed off, broken bat, two outs. He's okay. They were able to clear it, but he's unavailable tonight. Daniel Castro was the only right handed hitter on the bench. He was forced into action, so the Braves only have lefties to back up tonight. I hope our friends at Zaxby's are watching the game tonight. I'm sure they are. Sounds to me like Ibar is in line for an endorsement for some, for some boneless wings. <laughs> Here's Darno. He's had a good night tonight. Again, batting leadoff for Atlanta. Two hits and a walk, including a double. He's stolen a base. And could have had a triple had that ball on the two base hit not bounced into the stands down the right field line. Chase, the fifth different Brave to bat leadoff this year. And he's behind nothing in two. On the right field line, but that's curling into the stands. Good try and a good idol. Watch it sail by off the plate. One ball, two strikes. To right, and that will retire the side. Nothing doing for Atlanta in the seventh. Time to stretch. Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to At Bat 
Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Go to MLB.tv for your details. Bottom seven, Pittsburgh in command, leading 8 2. They've wrapped out 10 hits. And the Braves go deeper into the bullpen. It's Alexi Ogondo. This is fourth outing on the road trip. One at Kansas City, and now the third game of this four game series here in Pittsburgh. So far on the road trip in three outings, he's pitched two innings, given up four hits, two runs, one walk, and five strikeouts. All the runs came against the Pirates here three days ago. And he'll face Starling Marte for Pittsburgh. When Marte came off the paternity list, Alan Hansen, who picked up his first major league hit in this series, went back to AAA. Marte and his wife Noelia welcomed the birth of their daughter, Tiana, on Monday. First pitch swing and a pop up to left. Jeff Rancourt is going to have an easy play. And he makes it. Good start for Ogando. One up. And one down for Harrison. Harrison has an infield hit in three tries. Continue on in the seventh inning. One of your four keys has proven to be very important. Early offense. And two in the first, three in the second, all with two outs. Too much for Mike Fulton Evich and the Braves to overcome at this point. Pittsburgh has scored a single run, a single run in the fifth inning, two more in the sixth. The Braves runs came in the fourth inning, an RBI double by Tyler Flowers. Jeff Frankur solo home run in the sixth. Yeah, it's just happening with alarming regularity, falling behind early. As we said, coming into the game last night, the Braves' first inning ERA was over seven. Now ball is short. Castro got a third hop and whips it over to first for the second out. Pirates are 17 and eight this year when they score the first run of a game. And nine and three here in their home park when that happens. And even though their bullpen has been shaky. And conversely, to tell you how important those early runs can be for Atlanta, the Braves are two and 21 when the other team scores the first run of the game. So unfortunately, those numbers have played out in game four of the series. Here's Mercer, two hits and three tries. He scored a run. Atlanta's pitching staff has turned in one, one, two, three inning. That was from Eric O'Flaherty. He came on in relief in the fourth. That's headed foul and into the seats. It's one and one. Where it came from and into center field. A three hit night for Jordy Mercer. He has seven hits in the series. He had one last night. He had two in game two. One in game one with a couple of walks mixed in there too. He's been on base all the time. He has an 11 game hitting streak against the Braves now. And we'll try to put a stop to that next time we face the Pirates. As I said, that is 
in August. First three games in August down in Atlanta. One ball, no strikes for Chris Stewart. He was hit by a pitch and scored the eighth pirate run tonight. Other scores Cleveland leads Cincinnati 7 to 2. The Reds cannot wait for that series to end. Including the runs tonight, Cleveland has outscored the Reds 43 to 16 in four games. There's talk of a managerial change there as well. Brian Price for the Reds. That's a situation in Cincinnati where they have no pitching at all. Homer Bailey's been hurt. Their starters coming into tonight had worked a grand total of 11 innings in the first three games of that series. And as we've mentioned, the Reds' bullpen has been getting pummeled. They've given up 33 home runs this year. And in that ballpark, that is not a good mix. Joey Votto is hitting the low 200s, I believe. So it's been a long year already for the Cincinnati Reds. Cardinals are beating Colorado, a slugfest in St. Louis, 10 6 in the sixth. Cardinals got great news. Adam Wainwright pitched his best game of the year last time out. He went six and two thirds. The Cardinals shut out Colorado, 2 0 last night. As this one's hit hard by Stewart to left, Frank Poor drifts back and he puts that away. And that takes care of the Pirates in the seventh. We go to the eighth. Marcus Freeman and Frank Coor are coming up. Runs in the first inning. A pass ball was mixed in there. A hit batter was mixed in, and then a couple of hits lower in the batting order for the Pirates, and they were on their way. Jeff Francoeur had a great night. Jeff, a single, a double, a homer. He's due up in this inning. He hits a triple. He's got the cycle. Jeff Block has dazzled the Braves by striking out six and in seven innings, and it's been fun watching Polanco play in this series. And though, even though he plays for the Pirates, he's been something else. And speaking of fun. See Sean Rodriguez take over at shortstop for Pittsburgh. And at long last, the Pirates will see the major league debut of Wilfredo Boscan. He's been up with the big league club four times in his professional career, three times last year, but never got into a game. Is that right? So this is his first time on a major league mound. He was three and four at AAA as a starter. Struck out 31 in 40 innings. With Indianapolis. 
And as we said, the Pirates are looking for any help they can find in their bullpen. Maybe Boscan can be the answer for them. His first big league pitch is a strike to Nick Marcakis. Scott is from Maracaibo, Venezuela. He is 26 years old. And it's out of play foul. Ten game winner at AAA last year. He's 13 and 7 with Indianapolis. Originally signed by the Rangers. Was traded to the San Diego Padres. Granted free agency, went to the Red Sox. Where he pitched in 2014. And then the Pirates got him as a minor league free agent after the 14 season. You can understand how he got called up and didn't pitch last year. They won so many games. He might have been called up just in case they needed a, an extra arm one night or two and then sent back. But he's earned his way back now to pitch. 6'2, 175 pounds. And brought up today when Corey Luke was sent back to AAA for Pittsburgh. And a line drive to third. He's retired his first major league hitter. And did you see how far Kong was playing off the line? As hard as it is to hit a major league baseball, and I can only imagine how difficult that is with all the shifting that takes place in the advanced metrics. It's a miracle anybody finds space to get a hit. Six years ago or so, there are about 3,000 shifts total in major league baseball, all 30 teams. This year, there's a pace of over 30,000. It has dramatically changed the way the game is played, managed, coached, and from an offensive standpoint, Creates a lot of problems. And here's the Pirates shift for Freddie Freeman. Freddie's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. If nothing else, it ought to tell hitters you can't, you can't be one dimensional. Can't shift on you if you're using the whole field. And we've seen Freddie do that. He's laid down a bunt, he's poked the ball the other way a time or two. But many a manager in a late game will say, You want to lay it on a bunt instead of hitting the ball out of the ballpark? Right. I'll take it. And it's rumored to be the great Lou Boudreau, the player manager for the Indians, who invented the shift to try to find a way to get Ted Williams out. Jaso to his right. Pitcher covers the bag. Two up, two down. And the funny thing was that if if you run into any instructional reels of Ted Williams, he's always talking about hitting the ball up the middle. There's only one defender standing there, and that's the pitcher. And yet he was a dead pull hitter. You bet. So what do you think? Triple here? Yeah, let's do it. Come on, Frenchie. I just say if he hits one in the gap somewhere, just run till they tag you. If you make it to third, there you go. Right. Jeff's had a terrific night. He's singled, he's doubled, he's homered in that order. And that ball's away from him. One ball, no strikes. If it weren't for a good play by Marte on the double in the fourth inning, he might already have the triple in the bag. Marte was able to go to his left and cut a ball off, keep it from getting to Death Valley out there. One ball, one strike. And 
that's into the seats to the right side. Foul. It's one and two. White Sox one, Houston nothing. That's Chris Sale pitching for the White Sox, going for his ninth win this year. Evan Gaddis catching for the Astros tonight. I bet Sale makes the All-Star team. What do you think? Pretty good chance. One ball, two strikes. And here it is. Another big cut. Seattle already beat Baltimore today, 7-2. The Mariners lead the American League West. Scott Service is in his first year as the skipper in Seattle. The Yankees are in Oakland later on tonight. Toronto and the Twins tied 2-2 in the sixth. These are your American League scores late tonight. Jeff hanging tough might have cracked his bat. Yep, I think he did. I'll tell you what, Toronto got it handed to him by Tampa Bay in Toronto. There's tons of runs after the big fight in Texas. Toronto went home and got whipped by the Rays. Look, we're only 40 games or so into the season. It's way too early to say a team is a disappointment. But I think so many people had such high expectations for the Toronto Blue Jays. They're 19 and 23 this year. They've lost five straight. Mighty Yankees are in last place, by the way. One ball, two strikes. And Jeff didn't get the slider. And how about Boscan? His first major league inning. For that, he appears grateful. He worked a perfect eight with his first major league strikeout. Just go to your app store and download the free Fox Sports Go app. Log in and watch the live stream. Now you can take the Braves wherever you go. And now we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And former Pirate Jason Grilly is on to pitch for the Braves, who trail eight to two in the series finale. Seventeenth game for Jason. Worked here a couple of days ago in his old home ballpark. Wasn't a good outing. An inning, a third, three hits, a run, a walk, two strikeouts. Sean Rodriguez, who just checked in, leads things off for the Bucks. Alexio Gondo worked a scoreless inning with a hit. Ian Cole two-thirds of an inning scoreless. 
John Gant gave up two runs in an inning and a third. Eric O'Flaherty a run in an inning plus. And Mike Fultonevich five runs in three innings. Nothing in two. I'll tell you what, these Pirates can break out some different shoes on you. Josh Harrison wearing white shoes. Sean Gus has some gold flashing down there. You better be able to run if you're wearing shoes like that. He can't. Yeah, he's got it covered. I mean, if you're a station to station runner like AJ Brzezinski, Bartolo Colon. Bartolo, that's a perfect example. <laughs> don't think you want to break those. Don't out. think those would no. would be the right shoe. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. And that was a little high. It's two and two to Rodriguez. Nats still lead the Mets 9-1 in the seventh. Giants and Padres are tied at one in the third. See the Giants on our upcoming homestand. San Francisco is red hot. One seven straight. And Rodriguez swing and a miss. Ball pops away from Flowers. He can't recover in time. And Rodriguez is at first despite being struck out by Grilly. Well, that one will go as a wild pitch because it went in the dirt. But again, Tyler just kind of followed that one. Got his glove turned late. Didn't get in front of it. So Jaso's in the box. He's got a three hit night. No strikes. Cutchin waits next. Here in the early going for Jason, he's gone to a lot of three ball counts on hitters. Caused him to have to make better pitches than he would like. Three balls and a strike. And Jaso takes a walk. They're a disciplined bunch, aren't they? Yeah. So here's McCutcheon. If memory serves, he greeted Grilly with a first pitch triple to the triangle in left center field. his line tonight. And his next hit will be number one on the list for most in PNC Park history.
high fly ball to straightaway center. And Malik's makes the play for out number one. Ball sounds different off his bat, doesn't it? It jumps. And the same for this man, Gregory Polanco. Two more runs for Polanco, who has nine hits in the series. He's tripled and homered in game four. Behind third, that'll be playable for Darno in foul ground. Really made a good pitch, and Polanco is out on a on a infield fly. Two outs, and here's Young Ho Gong. Guy's been chasing a few breaking balls, but they better be good ones. He homered last night on a hanging slider from Viscaino. There's a strike. Looks mad at the plate, like that was a pitch you wanted to take a swing at. Uh huh. That was almost an extra base hit. Burnett fan comes away with a souvenir. No balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Good call, Joe. There was that breaking ball. And Grilly works out of trouble in the eighth inning. He got four outs. Only three of them count, though. We had We'll have Braves Live presented by Xfinity after the game. Jerome standing by in our Atlanta studios. Braves will head to Philadelphia. They'll first try to come back from a big deficit in the ninth inning here in Pittsburgh.
Jason Grilly struck out two through a wild pitch and a walk in the bottom of the eighth inning, and that's the difficulty of the task for the Braves. Yeah, they're now 102 and one, dating back to the beginning of last year when they lead after eight and they're up comfortably tonight. Wisconsin will stay in the game. Can't have a better big league debut than he just had. Three up, three down. Jeff Francoeur, his first major league strikeout. And now he'll face Tyler Flowers in the top of the ninth inning. Flowers has been on base twice. He's knocked in a run with a double. That was the first Atlanta run of the game. Tyler now 10 for his last 28 over the last eight games he has played. And he's got his average bumped up to 284. Screamer hit foul, no balls, two strikes. Well, he gave Stewart exactly what he wanted. Stewart wanted a high fastball there, and I mean he threw it right at the target. And Flowers spoiled it. And back again to the screen. It's still 0 and 2. Swing and a miss. Good breaking ball. Back to back strikeouts for Boscan. One away in the ninth for Gordon Beckham. So after the win last night, and a good win for the Braves all around, uh, tonight, again, there's no errors on the board, but there were mistakes made, miscues, mishandled baseballs, mm -hmm. I guess would be the best way to put it, that don't go in the books as a as an error but they were costly tonight with the difference in the ball game probably not but it's still got to be tightened up and headed to Philadelphia uh, tomorrow night Aaron Nola way he's been pitching you figure runs are going to be hard to come by hopefully the Braves in that series in Philadelphia can get off to good starts and not fall behind early quite so much. Yeah five nothing after two tonight all five runs for the Pirates scored in the first two innings came with two outs as Gordon Beckham picks up the first hit allowed by Boscon in the big leagues. Gordon one for four and that gives him five hits in the series. And the inning continues with Daniel Castro. And for Mike Fulton and good velocity he had seemingly good movement but a lot of deep counts Joe and he got the two outs and couldn't get over the hump and that hit batsman to gong opened the door for the first inning. It did but he was also frustrated by some blue pits that weren't just hits they were hits with runners aboard that drove in runs right. So Mike will get set for his next start which will take place at home for the Braves. Guessing either Tuesday or Wednesday. There's an off day on Monday for Atlanta, so we'll see how Brian Snicker and Roger McDowell set up the staff for the start of the homestand. 
Oh, it's a strike. Even count to Castro. Little squibber hit towards second. Swipe tag try. Beckham was safe. The throw to first got Castro. Runner at second, two outs. And Kelly Johnson is going to grab a bat. He's the last hope. Good job of by Beckham to avoid that one. Runner at second, two outs. The Pittsburgh crowd starts to make some noise. They're an out away from their 22nd win of the season. And a swing and a miss. On to wrap up game number 40 of the 2016 season. It's 8 2 Pittsburgh. Inside corner 0 and 2. The win will be important to Clint Hurdle, but he might also get real excited tonight about the work of Boscan here. As a guy he can count on in the bullpen. Fly ball center, McCutcheon is there. And the Pirates take three out of four from Atlanta. Tonight's final, Pittsburgh eight, Atlanta two. Polanco had a monster series against the Braves with nine hits. And the Pirates jumped out 5 0 after two. And despite Jeff Francoeur's three hit, one homer game, Atlanta couldn't catch up. That's your final. We'll finish up things from Pittsburgh after this quick timeout.